Today we're going to try to fix this turntable. Uh, this is one from the local dump. I, I almost didn't pick it up because it's kind of nasty. But I did pick it up because it's a direct drive turntable. Now, there are multiple different ways that turntables work. And uh, I'm going to diagram this for you. So there are, there are multiple ways that turntables work. The most common and the cheapest have a motor that looks kind of like this. It has a post, I think it's called the capstan. They often have different steps, different diameters, one for each speed. And then there's an idler wheel that contacts the capstan. And then the inside of the turntable touches the idler wheel. So the RPM of this motor is determined by the frequency of the line current going to the coil. Uh, this is called a synchronous motor. So it always moves in lockstep with the sine wave of the power coming into the unit. The different steps on the capstan determine the ultimate speed. And then the idler wheel transfers that rotation to the turntable platter. So that's, that's the most common situation. More expensive turntables will have a turntable and then underneath the turntable there'll be a motor and then there'll be a belt that drives the turntable around. This motor sometimes is a synchronous motor, but more often it's uh, some sort of DC servo motor and then there's some electronics that control the speed of this so that you can switch between 16, 33, 45, 78, what have you. This turntable uses none of those processes. This is a direct drive turntable. There's a set of electromagnets underneath the turntable mounted to the chassis and then there are, I'm not sure, magnets or maybe just some metal bars under the platter. And the platter is the armature of the motor. So there's really only one moving part, which is the platter. That doesn't include the, the mechanics that move the needle onto the disc and, and all that stuff. So the turntable platter itself is the armature of the motor. So that makes this turntable kind of interesting. and unfortunately has a couple of problems. The first problem that I noticed was the uh, the tone arm weight was missing and I've replaced that with a collar with a set screw in it. It's just a metal collar for going on a shaft but it's about the right weight and this needle now feels like it's about the right weight. If I can get this working I will buy a new needle for this and then I will use a jeweler's scale to set the gram weight here but for right now this is this is about right. This will good enough for test. The problem with this turntable, I will show you now. Power's up just fine. Before I go there, I, I went looking for some music that I could play on this turntable to test it, to show you the problem with it. I went to the local used vinyl store. I got some of the oldest, cheapest classical music albums that I could find down in their basement room. Got those here. I played these on a turntable that was working and shazam them and both of them show up immediately. So they are definitely in the copyright strike database. I, I'm assuming Shazam and YouTube and and all of these various services use the same database or buy similar databases. So uh, I can't actually play any of these for you here. However, at the dump some time ago, I did find this album, Missing Labels. I don't even know what it is. Kind of honky-tonk piano music. But when I play this and I Shazam it, it doesn't show up. Shazam does not find out what this is. So I'm assuming this is not in anybody's database. So I'm going to be using this record to test with, even though it is terribly scratched up, really kind of awful sounding, but such is life. Here's the problem. So mechanically, everything works just fine. I believe this is Give My Regards to Broadway. No, it's Anchors Away, but you can see that's much too fast. And we are set to 33 RPM. So that's our problem. Not only are we much too fast, but there's also a warble to the speed. So I'm going to open this up and we're going to take a look inside and see if we can figure out what's wrong with it. I'm going to put a tie wrap around here because the little clip is broken. All 
All right, and I'm going to use that roll of tape to hold this up off the uh, the ground. All right, and we flip this over. Okay, so we. We've got it open. Here's our electronics. Our motor is here. I'm gonna try the first thing. I'm gonna clean these switches. Maybe it's a dirty switch and it's not sending the right signals to the control board. So let's, let's give that a try. Oh, that's interesting. The transformer. All right, so this must have taken a tumble because these posts are uh, broken off. There must have been some uh, blunt force trauma at some point. All right, let's see if we have any change here. Still looks kind of fast. I think that's moving even faster than it was before. Okay, clearly that's not the problem nice that the board is marked sections are marked out too this is marked power supply this is marked servo this is marked motor drive well that's interesting these are potentiometers Let's see if we can get a better look in here okay these are our signals from the cartridge looks like the only connection here to the main circuitry is a ground so our audio side is completely separate from our drive side, which makes sense. Okay, so what I don't see is any sort of speed sensor. I'm gonna pop this board out and take a look at the other side and see if there's any obvious problems. All right, so here's our board. These are our motor coils. Here's the magnet that drives the turntable. So this magnet and these coils are the entirety of the motor. So our problem has to be somewhere in this drive circuitry. And I am suspicious of these potentiometers. So I'm gonna clean those and then wiggle them back and forth and then we'll give this another try and see if maybe just one of those pots is bad. Okay, so I've sprayed these. Now I'm going to wiggle them back and forth, but I'm going to be careful to put them back approximately where they were. All right, I'm going to put this back in place and see what we have. All right, let's flip this back over. Okay, we're still way too fast. So I wanna to try to adjust some of those potentiometers while we are playing a record. Okay, I have lifted the turntable up on some quart cans of paint, and I've also put a mirror underneath so that we can we can both see what's going on so let's see if we can change the speed by twiddling some of those pots looks like there are five potentiometers i think i'll just go uh left to right from my point of view Okay, adjusting that one definitely made a change. I wasn't able to slow it down to the point where it should be, but that's encouraging. So let's try the next one. That doesn't seem to make a change. No change. That one does seem to affect it. All right, it seems like I can slow it down to some extent 
using these potentiometers. However, I can't actually get it to the correct speed. So I think it's time to do a little research, see if I can find a schematic diagram and better understand what's going on in here. So I found a manual online and apparently there is a sensor head underneath the turntable. So I'm gonna take the turntable out and take a look at that. Well, there we go. Okay. All right, let's see if moving this closer to the edge of the turntable has any effect. That's as far forward as it will go. And that's hitting. Okay, so we need to come back from there. Okay, that should be about two millimeters closer than it was originally. All right, and that turns freely. Interesting. Okay, so repositioning that sensor has slowed it way down, which is very encouraging. Now I think I just need to play with those potentiometers to, uh, to dial in the speed. Okay, I think we're close. But, hey, I don't really know this uh, artist, so I, I don't really know what this should sound like. So I'm going to turn off the lights and we'll use this stroboscope disc to see if we're at speed. Okay, what I have here is a neon light bulb and there's a little 100K resistor and then this is just hooked up to uh, 110 volts. But what we should be seeing here is this center band. This is the 33 and a third band. These lines should be steady. And then on either side, these are rings that tell you how much you deviate from the speed. So if these were not crawling around to the left or crawling around to the right, then we would be off speed by whatever those amounts are. And it looks like we are dead on speed now. I think what has happened is that the drip around the inside of the turntable platter, which is that kind of vinyl magnetic material that like magnetic signs are, are usually made from, I think that material has lost some of its magnetism and we just needed to move that sensor closer to the inside of the turntable for it to work and for it to properly sense the speed. So I think that's it for today. I think we've repaired the turntable and I'm now I'm going to clean it up, order a new needle for it, put it into service. So I'll see you next time.